Hello again, everybody. Welcome to another lesson of Sun Devil Learning Labs uh, from Arizona University. I'm your instructor, Michael Barker. And uh, today you should be a fifth grader getting ready to work on subtracting fractions. And we're gonna make like units numerically. That is our objective, subtract fractions, making like units numerically. And what that really means is we're gonna try and get away from starting to draw pictures and using all our models like we've used before. Our number line may help us a little bit, but hopefully we'll start to understand the math behind things and we don't have to uh, always draw a picture, which can be time consuming, take up a lot of space, and it can be really hard once our fractions start to be really small parts. So before we start, I want to go over three things that I always go over in our lessons. I want, want you to make sure that you're in a comfortable setting with no distractions. Don't um, have your dog or cat running on your lap and don't have a little brother or sister behind you. More importantly, don't have the TV or, or music on in the background. This is a time to learn and the lesson will actually go quicker if you focus on, on just getting through the lesson and not a bunch of distractions. If you have, have any issues or if you have questions, be sure and ask your mom or dad to maybe give you a hand or whoever your guardian is to give you a hand and uh, make sure that you're not, not disrupted. Second, gather any supplies you might need today. I'm gonna to suggest a couple of pencils and notebook. I hope you're keeping a notebook for some of these lessons and at least several sheets of paper. Uh, scissors, I have it on my sheet, but we don't really use them so much anymore, but a ruler is gonna be always helpful to, uh, to draw lines, whether it could be a number line, you may still draw some area models, so a ruler is always kind of helpful. And finally, be sure and use the restroom before we start. Remember, you can always pause the video if you need to take a break. My restroom thing is just so you can maybe get started and not be delayed so much uh, during the first part of the lesson. Okay, let's get started. I've got a review. Hopefully you've been following the other Sun Devil Learning Lessons and we have a review. Um, I have wrote them out in words. You can write the answer in words. I've done the first one for you as far as one minus one half. That should equal one half. And we have some problems over here as well. Take about three minutes and just make sure that you're comfortable subtracting fractions from whole numbers and parts of wholes and uh, we'll come back in a minute and go over the solutions. Okay, welcome back. Hopefully that didn't take you too long and was pretty painful, painless. Uh, one minus one half. One half, I gave you that and I wrote it out, one half. Two minus one half should be one and one half. We've written it in words and numerically. Three minus one half, two and one half two or seven minus one half, six and one half. And then after we got away from the halves, we tried one minus one third and should have got two thirds. When we did it numerically, one minus one third was two thirds. One minus two thirds is one third. You can kind of see the symmetry there. Two minus two thirds is gonna be one and one third. 2 minus 1 third is going to be 1 and 2 thirds. Finally, we look at 5 minus 1 quarter is 4 and 3 quarters, or th fourths. And 5 minus 3 fourths is going to be 4 and 1 fourth. Hopefully, your worksheet looks something like this. And if not, you probably have to do a little more review in one of the previous lessons. So let's start with our first problem, problem 1. It's it's a pretty straightforward problem, one third minus one fifth. Now we're gonna start working on it numerically, but I, I took the liberty of taking the first problem and drawing area models. We'll review, this is another part of our review. So we'll look at this, but again, I'm hoping you can get away from using this all the time. One third, we broke our, our unit into three equal parts, shaded one third and we're subtracting one fifth. So we broke it into five equal parts, shaded one fifth, and that's what our picture would look like if we were using the area model. 
but we're going to try and do it mathematically as well along with the area model. So we need to make like units. Our lowest common multiple is going to wind up being 15, right? Because we took our one third and broke it into five more equal parts to give us a total of 15 equal units. In the other box, we already had one fifth and we broke that, we broke our fifths with two more lines and we again wound up with 15 equal parts. And if we were gonna look at that mathematically, we could say we took one and we multiplied by five and we wound up with five and then we took three and multiplied by five and we wound up with 15. What a coincidence, that's our lowest common multiple. And then we're gonna subtract, we took one fifth and we multiplied by three over three and we wound up with three fifteenths. So when we look at all of that, we can trans transfer ourselves over to five fifteenths minus three fifteenths and that makes our solution pretty simple. Five fifteenths minus three fifteenths is going to be equivalent to two fifteenths. Our two fifteenths is our answer here. Even though our problem wasn't written in fifteenths, we're able to express our solution in two fifteenths because that is the lowest possible value that our, our units can be expressed in. If, you, if we take one more look, we had five fifteenths, we subtracted three fifteenths, these three are gone, and it left us with one, two fifteenths. So we're now doing the problems mathematically, and hopefully we can get to the point where we're not using the pictures anymore, but certainly if you need to use the pictures, there, there's not a problem with it, it's just I'm trying to get you a little more efficient and save a little time. Okay, why don't you take a few minutes, three, four minutes, it shouldn't take you any more than that, and we'll work on uh, our problem number two, three-fifths minus one-sixth. Obviously, we're not going to have the same type of units, so you're going to have to do a little bit of work to figure out how to make your, your numbers have this equal units, and we'll, we'll give you a few minutes to work on it, and then we'll go over the solution that I used. Okay, welcome back. And hopefully you came up with something that looked like this. So you may not have to draw the whole table. You may not have to do a lot of the work that I did, but I wanna make sure you understand how I got to our solution. So we're looking for our lowest common multiple. And first we could multiply denominators, but as we go further along in our lessons, we're gonna find out that sometimes that may not be the most practical method. But for today, five times six is equal to 30. Let's double check. Our lowest common multiple, five times one is five, times two is 10, times three is 15, times four is 20, times five is 25, and six is 30. We'll stop there. And if we were going by our sixes, we know we have six times one is six, times two is 12, three is 18, four is 24, and five is 30. So if we had to draw the chart, which is fine, eventually, or we may have a multiplication chart that we keep with us, which is also a handy tool, but we see that five times six is 30, six times five is 30, and that happens to be the same as five times six if we had just multiplied our denominators. So we know our lowest common multiple is going to be 30. What do we do with that? Well, we want to make sure we can change both of our fractions into units of 30. We want our denominator to be 30. So what do we do? We take, since we know five times six is 30, we have to multiply our three fifths times six over six, and three times six is 18 and five times six is 30. So we have a total of 18 thirtieths. And then we wanna make our, our one sixth unit into 
thirtieths as well, but we're going to multiply by five over five this time, right? So one times five is five, and six times five is thirty. We have like units now, five thirtieths here and eighteen thirtieths here. We're now ready to do our next step. And what was our next step going to be? Well, it was going to be subtraction, right? 18 thirtieths, we'll move our 18 thirtieths down to here, minus 5 thirtieths, we're taking 5 thirtieths away from 18 thirtieths, leaves us with a total of 13 thirtieths. And that would be our solution. Once again, we can write our solution as 13 thirtieths. Did we have to go to the trouble of explaining that all of these change to thirtieths? Really, no. This is our answer. And we've simplified it to where all of this work results in this answer. Okay, let's move on to our next problem, which is, I'm calling it problem three. And it's gonna be, we're gonna use a mixed number now, one and three fourths minus three fifths. Take a few minutes, use the tools you have, and uh, take three, four minutes and see what, what method you best use to come up with a solution. And welcome back. I'll tell you how I started our problem, and there is more than one way to skin a cat, so to speak. Uh, but the first thing I did was I looked at one and three fourths and realized that that was the same as four fourths. One is equal to four fourths plus three fourths minus three fifths. So I didn't change our fifths, but now that changed our, our problem into just working with just fractions. And we have seven fourths minus three fifths. Now we know from this point, we still need to work with like units and we don't have like units here. So we need to move to our next step. Again, here's my old lowest common multiple chart. And what do we know? First, we know that four times five is 20. But let's check our chart and see if there's a better way or some lower multiples that might work. In this case, we can see that it really isn't. We can see that four times five is 20, five times four is 20, and that those are the lowest multiples of four and five. So now we know our next step is going to be to convert both of our fractions, 7 fourths and 3 fifths, into like units. So 7 times 5 is 35, and 4 times 5 is 20. Those are our like units. And then we want to subtract 3 times 4, 12 out of 4 times 5, 20 like units. So now we, we've established that we... We have like units, and we take our next step. We'll move up here, and we'll look at what we did. We have we took our 35 twentieths, and we're going to subtract 12 twentieths. 35 twentieths minus 12 twentieths leaves us with 23 twentieths. Now, I'm hoping that you can realize that 1 is the same as 20 20th. So when we change from our improper fraction to a mixed number, we know that we have 20 20ths, which leaves us three more 20ths. So our mixed number looks like one and three 20ths. Our solution, one and three 20ths. Hopefully your paper looks something like this. Now there is another method that we could have used to work on this, and I'll go over it a little bit quickly. It does realize that we already know that we still have to find our lowest common multiple. Four times five is 20. We determined our multiple was 20. But in this example, we left our whole number alone. We just moved one down and we converted three fourths to 15 twentieths, we can do the math, it's three times five and four times five. And then we converted three fifths into 12 twentieths, just like we did in the previous slide. 
And so now when we subtract, we have one and 15 twentieths. And what are we gonna subtract? 12 twentieths. So our one is still intact and 15 minus 12 is 3 twentieths. You should be able to see that both of our solutions are the same. And either method is perfectly acceptable and it's just a matter of what you're more comfortable with, what you feel is more efficient, and just what maybe paints a better picture in your head. Okay, let's look at doing solving in another way. Again, this isn't really mathematically, but sometimes it helps when you want to illustrate the solution. And I'm, I'm very comfortable with you using any method you have. If you need area models, fraction bars, whatever it happens, but I'm hoping you'll find that working numerically is going to be the best solution because it's going to be the most efficient. So once again, let's say what we have here. We have one and three fourths minus three fifths. There's our problem. But we can't work because again, we don't have like units. Now we already knew from our previous examples, and we can go back a slide. If you need to go back on the video a little bit, you can back it up. But we know that one and three fourths is the same as one and 15 twentieths minus 12 twentieths, right? And we've already found out that that was equivalent to one and three twentieths. We've solved this problem that way. But let's say you were using the number line, okay? We can't do one and three fourths one way and then go back another way with three fifths because we're not counting like units. We could maybe approximate, but let's just say we want to use this and be a little more precise. We do know we can break our lot number line in the increments of 20, which I've gone ahead and done it with this number line. So first we want to count out one and 15 twentieths. Okay. And we've done that. We've gone all the way here. If I counted all the little dots, you'd see one, two, three, it's 15 twentieths, okay? Now we wanna subtract three fifths or 12 twentieths. So now we have to go back in the other direction on our number line, right? We're gonna subtract one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And what number is that? Well, it's one and one, two, three twentieths. Lo and behold, there's our one and three twentieths, and it matches how we just solved the problem numerically, and it's just another way to help you be comfortable. Okay, it's time to work on our worksheet, and our problem set, which should take you maybe 10, 12 minutes or six problems. So three minutes of problem would be uh, 18 minutes. It may take you a few minutes longer than I thought, but uh, somewhere about 10 to 15 minutes, I think you should be able to solve these numerically. And what you first have to do, uh, just to remind you, generate equivalent fractions to get like units. I really want you to show your work and uh, then you'll be able to compare it with mine. After you've done that, you can subtract and then for the solution for the problem in red, this last one here, I'd like to see a show it on a number line as well. And we'll be back in a few minutes and we'll start to go over the solutions. All right, hopefully you're, you've finished this part and your sheet looks something like this. The first two I didn't think were too difficult. Uh, we're looking at one half minus one third. I already wrote the answer in, but let me show you how we got there. We know our lowest common multiple is six. Two times three is six. You could have wrote a chart and that would have shown you the same thing, but I think most of us know that two times three is six. So one half times three over three will give us three six. Our second unit was one third, one third times two over two would give us two six. So now we've got our problem working in like units and we know that three six, three minus two six is one six. So the solution for one half 
minus one third is going to be one sixth. Let's look at the second problem. Seven tenths minus one third. Hopefully the first thing you notice is, right, we don't have like units, but what can we do? We're getting pretty good at this. What's our lowest common multiple? Well, it's gonna be 30, right? We, three times 10 is 30. And really there were, if we did your chart, you could do your chart, 30 would be the solution that would come up for both of you the first time. So, okay, let's look a little further. Seven tenths, you're gonna multiply that by three over three, right? Three times seven, 21. Three times 10, 30. So seven tenths equivalent fraction is 21 thirtieths. Again, you, I think you can start to see that it would get a little unwieldy to draw our pictures with uh, 30 little squares in them. So it's a lot easier if we can solve problems numerically. One third, one times 10 and three times 10. One times 10 is 10, three times 10 is 10. That's 10 thirtieths. Okay, so now we've got a simple problem, right? We've got like units. We've done these a number of times. So everybody should be able to tell me that 21 minus 10 is 11. 11 thirtieths is our solution for the second problem. And we move up here, 7 tenths minus 1 third is 11 thirtieths. Again, I want to show you both our solutions are in different units than the problem stated. But that's because we had to make our equivalent fractions and we know that we did the right thing by making equivalent fractions. We could not express our answer in any of these similar units. And, and that's okay if our, number, if our solution does not really resemble the original problem in terms of the numerator and the denominator. Okay, let's move on. Two more problems. Here's our third problem. We had 7 eighths minus 3 fourths. Well, this was a pretty simple one. I kind of gave you this one. Our lowest common multiple is going to be 8, right? We know that 2 times 4 is 8. So 7 eighths, we've already got the right denominator there, but we want to change 3 fourths into eighths. So 3 fourths times 2 over 2 is going to give us a total of 6 eighths, 7 eighths minus 6 eighths, 7 minus 6, 1 eighth. You should be able to express your solution for 7 eighths minus 3 fourths as 1 eighth. Okay, now our next problem gets a little more interesting. 1 and 2 fifth minus 3 eighths. Again, we know we're not working with like units, plus we have a mixed number. So there's a couple of ways we can look at how to deal with our mixed number. First thing is we know that one is equivalent to five fifths. We're using fifths obviously because our fraction is in fifths. So we could say five fifths plus two fifths is the same as one and two fifths but we still have to subtract 3 eighths. So what that gave us was 7 fifths minus 3 eighths. Okay, what do we know now? We still have fifths and eighths. Our parts aren't the same, right? So we'll go back over to our lowest common multiple chart if you still need to draw it. But if not, in this case, five times eight is 40. And if we were to line it up with our chart, we would see that that is the lowest common multiple. We can't use a simpler form. Okay, we'll go back to our, our expression. Seven fifths, seven times eight over five times eight. Okay, and then we're gonna subtract three times five and eight times five. And what does that do? That's gonna give us our like units. 56 parts over 40, five times eight is 40, and we're gonna subtract three times five is 15, five times eight is 40. 
we wind up with 41 fortieths. And hopefully you can recognize that 41 fortieths, 40 fortieths is one, right? So one, and we're gonna have one fortieth left over. So one and one fortieth is our solution. And we'll write it up here. And, and look at it another way, if you like, because we don't have to change our whole number to a fraction if we want. Let's leave our, our whole number, our one, on the outside, so to speak. It's not really on the outside. That's maybe not a good term. I'm just, we want to deal with just the fractions, but we can't forget about our whole number. But we have one and two fifths minus three eighths. So we know the two fifths and the three eighths still need the lowest common multiple. We won't change the one, but again, we know one two fifths times eight over eight, that's now gonna give us 16 fortieths, okay? And we still take three eighths and change that into our units of fortieths, which is three times five is 15, over eight times five is 40. So lo and behold, what do we have? Our one stays the same, there it is. 16 fortieths minus 15 fortieths gives us a grand total of one and one forty. So I hope you can see that no matter which method you use, we still wound up in the same place with our solution. And finally, we had two more problems to look at, and we're gonna go through both of those. And I remember I asked you to draw the number line for the final one. But first, one and three tenths minus one sixth. Hopefully your sheet maybe isn't as messy as mine, but I hope you recognize a few of the same things that we recognize. So here, let's look though, we could do 10 tenths, right? Our one could become 10 tenths and we're gonna add it to three tenths, and we're gonna subtract one sixth. So now we're dealing with 13 tenths, our improper per fraction, minus one sixth. Again, we still don't have like units, but we need to look for our lowest common multiple. Now six times 10 would be 60, and we could have used that, but if we do use our multiple chart, we know that three times 10 is 30, and five times six is 30. So our lowest common multiple is gonna be 30. Hopefully you did all of this on your worksheet. So our 13 tenths becomes 13 over 10 times three over three, and that becomes 39 thirtieths. And now we need to subtract our one six. One six times five over five becomes five thirtieths. And 39 minus five will give us 34 thirtieths. Again, now we should know that 30 thirtieths is gonna give us our whole number, our one. And then that leaves us with four thirtieths left over. Now, most of us instructors will accept this as a, as a quality answer, but we should also be learning to simplify our fractions, right? And if we simplify 4 thirtieths, we should get 2 fifteenths. So, because we can divide both of these by 2, so we wind up with a solution of 1 and 2 fifteenths. Again, I would accept both of those and try to get you to work on simplifying your fractions eventually. So now if we use my alternative method, where we don't, we don't change our whole number into a fraction, we just leave our one out there to work on its own, and now we're looking at one and three tenths. We still know that our lowest common multiple is 30, but this time, we just changed the fraction to three tenths fraction. We're gonna change into thirtieths. So we have three times three will give us nine. And we're still going to 30 parts. So three times 10 is 30. 
So now we have one and nine thirtieths. Okay, we still have to convert one sixth into parts of 30. We know again, when we're gonna multiply by five over five, five times one is five, five times six is 30. And now we're gonna subtract one and nine thirtieths minus five thirtieths will give us one and four thirtieths. Again, same as one and two fifteenths. And you should be able to notice that all three of our solutions are the same. Hopefully your, so, your solution set is looking something like this, or if not, take a picture or come back and make whatever corrections you need to do. And I'm gonna move on to our last problem. Two and one third minus one and one fifth. Okay. So again, we could change our whole number. Two would be the same as six thirds plus one third. And we'd have to change this whole number. That's going to be five fifths plus one fifth. Or when we get down to the next step, we have seven thirds minus six fifths. Again, we don't have like units. What's our lowest common multiple? 15. Use the chart or do the math. Three times five is 15. So when we change seven, seven thirds into units of 15, seven times five is 35. Three times five is 15. Now we have to deal with six fifths. We have to change that into units of 15. So we have six times three is 18. And five times three is 15. So 35 fifteenths minus 18 fifteenths is gonna leave us with 17 fifteenths. Again, I think most of you are getting pretty good at knowing that 15 fifteenths is gonna be one, one whole unit. So we have one and two fifteenths is our solution. But we could have done it the other way that we've been talking about as well, our alternate method. We can leave our two alone and our one alone. We're gonna leave our whole numbers outside of our work, what we do on the fractions. So we work on just a fraction and we still know that three and five have to be converted to a lowest common multiple. And that's still gonna be our 15. So let's take a look, two and one times five over three times five is gonna be a total of two and five fifteenths. And now we need to subtract one and our fraction one fifth is gonna be one times three over five times three, you'll get one and three fifteenths. So now two and five fifteenths minus one and three fifteenths, what is that gonna result in our solution? Well, let's look, two minus one is one, there's our one, and five fifteenths minus three fifteenths is two fifteenths. And what do you know? This solution, one and two fifteenths, is the same as we got with our other method. And we can always put both of those up there for our solution to the problem. Now, the last thing I asked you to do was to express this on a number line. Number lines are a good tool and a lot of people are comfortable with them. So let's just take a look at what we had to do. I drew my number line here. Maybe you drew yours a little more clearly because I drew a lot of parts in to explain to you. But first we need to know, we, I drew a number line from zero to three and we know our, our lowest common multiple is 15. That means each each part of the number line has to be broken into 15 equal parts. Okay, so I, this is zero to one, this is 15 fifteenths, to here would be 30 fifteenths, and to three would be 45 fifteenths. But we're gonna, we're gonna start with two and one third, which we can't get away from everything when we do on our number line. We still have to change it to our two and five fifteenths like we've been doing. And then we count, we go one, two, and then those are whole numbers. Then we go one, two, three, four, 
five fifteenths. There's five fifteenths, okay? This is two and five fifteenths from this line to this line. Then we wanna subtract. We're gonna go back in the other direction. And how far back are we gonna go? Well, we looked at one and one fifth. Again, our line's broken into fifteenths. It's not broken into fifths. So we have to look at our converted fraction and we know that we're gonna move back 18 fifteenths. Or was it, I'm sorry, it wasn't 18 fifteenths. It was, we're moving back, yes, 18 fifteenths, I'm sorry. So we move back, we move back five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, eighteenths. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 eighteenths. The line right here is how far where we landed. And this arrow points to that. And if we counted from here, it would be one and one, two fifteenths. And look at that, it's the same solution that we've had all the way through the rest of the problem. I'm kind of hoping that you can see that the number line, while useful to estimate and useful to visualize, is probably not your best method of solving. You're really gonna need to learn these multiples and focus on changing your fractions into like units so that you can solve the problems numerically. All it takes is a little more practice and uh, if you need to stop and go back and go over some of the problems and repeat the video, I don't think, um, I, I don't think that'll be a problem. I think we've laid it out pretty clearly here for you so far. Also, I think I'd recommend as we're wrapping up here now that you continue to see the lesson plans and follow along because we're going to be taking the rest of the subtraction and lead into multiplication and division lessons as we move into the next couple of weeks. So thank you. And uh, I appreciate your taking time to, to take this lesson with me. And I hope it's really given you some help.